So BRICS Beta 1.98 has literally dropped in the last half an hour. And while I wasn't really going to cover it, there's actually quite a few things inside here that I think are nice quality of life enhancements that, well, I kind of thought it makes sense to just share. Now, I'll link to everything I'm talking about down in the description so you can take a look at this if you still have the full change log. And if you want to try this out on a non-production site, so don't do this on a live site, you can access this with the link that I'll put in the description as well. Okay, so the first thing we're going to take a look at is the new CSS Variable Manager. So we've been able to create and organize CSS classes since, I think, this latest version, the non-beta version, the 1.97. But now we can start to work with variables as well. So we can and access these in exactly the same way. You can use the icon in the top bar, or you can use Command, Control, and Period, or Full Stop in the UK, and that will open up this panel. Now, the classes, we've had that for a little while. You can see all my classes are displayed inside here. But we also now have variables. Now you can see I've already created one variable, but let's say I want to create something else. All we need to do is simply come down underneath, put in the name of the variable. So we'll say this is spacing dash medium. And then we can put the value we want. Now for this, I'm just going to stick to rems just for ease. We will say 3.5 rems. And we'll just click on create. And you can see now we've created another variable. Now once you've done that, we'll hit save. And obviously, we can share these, we can filter these, do all the same kind of things we could do with the classes. So organizing these and managing them should be pretty simple and straightforward. But now, when we hop over, and let's just say we've got this hero section, and we'll come into one of the options inside here, like the description, for example. Now, if we come in and we go into our styles option and open up our layout, you can see one of the other new features, and that's the redesigned options for our spacing and so on. And anywhere that we've got these options to open up and work with our CSS variables. You'll also notice we've got the option to switch between the old view, which you can see here, we still have those options for the variables, or we can switch over to the newer kind of view like this. And obviously you can still link and unlink and everything inside here. But now when we click on the variables, you'll see there's the variables I've just created. So the spacing medium, for example, you can see that adds it, or we can change that to spacing large, and it adds it. And again, we can link these if we want to. You can see now the spacing has been applied all the way around. So it's a nice little addition, and the fact that this is all added in and we can access those variables is pretty cool. So that's nice to see that we've got access to that. So that's one of the new features, or actually that's two of the new features. So yeah, a nice little quality of life. And I think that's the thing to consider with this 1.98 release when it comes out. Predominantly, it's quality of life enhancements to speed up working inside the editor itself. Now, if you like to work with code and the code block inside Bricks, there's some new features here that you may like. Now, first of all, you do have to make sure you've got the code execute functions enabled in the settings, or you won't actually see this. But you can see I've got a simple little bit of code inside here, and we've got the option to execute code. We can enable that, and you can see now, because this hasn't been signed, we'll say we'll sign the code, so there's a little security thing in place. But you can see you've got the option to execute code, we can pass dynamic data, and we can also suppress any PHP errors. So if you don't want to see those errors when you're testing things out, you may easily go and just remove those as well. So you can see we can just enable those. So if there's an error in there, you can kind of disable or show that, whichever you prefer to do. So again, another nice little quality of life enhancement comes in useful when you want to sort of run that code and see what's going to happen and have some more control over it using the code element. Now, another feature is the ability to very quickly and easily duplicate pages, including the terms and all those kinds of things that go with it. There's two ways to access this. You can simply come to the option at the top for your pages, click on any of these pages, you see hover over, we get the duplicate icons that allows us to easily duplicate things. Or from your pages list, you see if we hover over, we get the option to duplicate Bricks. Now, this works with Bricks and Gutenberg, so it's not limited just to Bricks pages. You can see we've got Duplicate WordPress, which is a page that isn't edited or created inside Bricks, so it's available there. So it's another little plugin you can kind of do away with if you like to duplicate content. This also works with any of your posts. You can see we've got Duplicate WordPress or Bricks if you're using it. And the same thing goes for any of your templates that you create using Bricks or Gutenberg. So you can see we've got the duplicate option there. So this is a nice way of being able to quickly duplicate with all the details and information in place. Like I say, does away with another plugin. Now, the very useful dot that tells us we've made changes to any of the settings for any of the elements has been expanded now to also work with the breakpoints. So for example, let's say we open up our hero section and we come to our description. 
Now we'll leave that as it is here, but let's switch over to tablet view and let's make some changes to it. So we'll just set this up, we'll come into our styles and we'll go into our background. We'll change the background color and we'll apply some kind of color to it. You'll now notice that we've got the dot that tells us there's extra styles specific to that or those particular breakpoints. So you can at a glance see there are differences between the different breakpoints that you're actually using. So you'll see when we go to mobile portrait, there's nothing showing up on there, but when we come over to our landscape and our tablet portrait and our desktop, it just tells us there are different values assigned to each of those breakpoints. So again, we can at a glance see that there's things that we need to check out if we're wondering why something isn't working the way we want. It may be because it's set on a different breakpoint. Now we've already seen the new spacing options and the new layout for all of these. So that's nothing we need to go over again. But again, like I say, nice to see those in there. Now there are a couple of other changes that are not so evident inside the editor and probably a little too deep to go into, but I'll quickly brush over them so you know exactly what they are. First of all, you've got a more flexible echo function name checks. So if you use a lot of dynamic data echo tags inside your brick site, you can now take advantage of more flexible ways to whitelist and check them using regex and so on. So you can take a look at the link that will be linked below so you can see exactly how to get these up and running, how they work, some code examples so you can kind of get a feel for it. Like I said, if you are a user that actually uses those a lot, this could be very useful for you. There are also a couple of new JavaScript events. So if you're working with tabs or accordions, you can see changed inside tabs or open and close inside the accordion. And also we've got cache for remote templates. So if you are using a remote template library, like Bricks Maven, for example, it was kind of annoying that every single time you opened up the library, you had to wait for all of those to load back in. So if you're back and forth testing things out, it got a little bit of a pain. Now these are gonna be cached for up to seven days. So it means that you don't have to worry about these being loaded in every single time. So the whole process of working with those remote templates should be a little smoother and a little faster. On top of that, though, I would recommend taking a look at the full change log because there are several new options, but also a lot of improvements and some fixes and things like that. So it's worth checking out to see what's going on. But like I said at the top of the video, only use this on a test site. Don't use this on a live site because there's a potential that things are going to go bottoms up and you're going to end up crying a lot because things are not working or your site just gets messed up too much. Anyway, that's all I wanted to cover in this quick video. Check out the links in the description down below and let me have your thoughts on these new updates and additions to Bricks Builder. Until next time, take care.